that you're touching on the strange angels who can help yeah. you out. Can you uh, talk, tell us about the strange angels. <laughs> yeah, when it collapsed, um, again, you know, and everything should collapse. It is what it is. <laughs> Entropy mm. is it's real. <laughs> Um, our bus was a great solution for us all to like, live on a bus and never stop working and traveling. And then the bus, you know, there was a fiery crash on a mountainside and um, that was our home. It was our livelihood. It was everything my children had known. And um, when that crash happened, you know, there was a pickle jar full of goldfish in the sink and one of the fish died and my little boy Wyatt said that he wanted to, you know, help the fish. And I thought he knew what death was. Um, so I, I kind of put the hippie talk on hold, you know, we're gonna do this uh, after you focused and sent good energy to this little <laughs> fish spirit. <laughs> and I sort of forgot, you know, <laughs> there's all this stuff going on. And I left Wyatt staring at a dead fish for hours and I, I came back and said, okay, now we're gonna have the talk about saying goodbye is good practice The goldfish, you know, it's perfect. And for when you start to lose people, you will have done this, you know, and then the fish just jumps up in the air and starts swimming around. <laughs> and Wyatt says, oh, good. <laughs> like, no, 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 that's not the lesson. <laughs> we, we pulled all our money, We I, told my bandmates, I'll fly you home. You know, you, you're off the hook here. This is my failure. You cannot play good music, my bad. I thought you could. You cannot not whore yourself out, blah, blah, blah. And they said, no way, we're pulling our money. We're all gonna finish this tour. So by the time we got to the next club, all these people had started writing saying, we heard about your bus crash. And we wanna give you studio time. We want." want you to stay with us we're going to give you guitars amps we play my club what can we do so that you don't stop playing music i'm crying right now just talking about it but that was the strange angels that became how my family continued how my music continued how i continued i don't i don't know what i would have done i was ready to just you know drive off the mountainside that day but they're still doing it i can still make records for three recording entities because some people want to hear it. It's beautiful. It's, that's, it's gotta be unimaginable to know that people have, that you've struck a chord with people to want to support you to that great length. Yes, yeah. and, and it has struck the chord within me to do the same. We help the homeless every day here. My son and I go out and it's, you know, we live in Southern California, it's like 25% of the nation's homeless or something. And it became just a, a lifestyle. And then I realized that there are too many tendrils of giving that I have ignored. It, it isn't just the hungry, but also these strange angels who would write and say, oh, I just lost my job, but it's gonna be a few months. And uh, so we made this rule only if you can afford it, and for real, like we'll find a way to get you your soundtrack. If you can't pay for it, it will always be free. And uh, they've come to me and said, well, I, I'm starting a new business. And I was like, what, what is it, <laughs> you know? And it's um, CSA, you know? And so we get farm vegetables for the family. And it's become this network of not just giving, but receiving, even the homeless. They tell us these stories that I would, I would never have known what humanity was here, they, they, this is like um, hunter-gatherer society in an urban environment. There's just so many different ways to give. Sometimes all they're asking for is eye contact. 